Many thanks for staying with us. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission has uh, disclosed that a total of 295,603 permanent voter cards were yet to be collected in the state. The commission also stated that a total of 17,705 ad hoc staff and 11,799 security personnel would be engaged for the poll, which is coming up on November 16th. The resident electoral commissioner in the state, Mrs. Olua Tuni Babalola, disclosed this at a press briefing at the headquarters of the commission in Akure, the state capital, on Monday. The REC reiterated that the commission was fully prepared to ensure that the forthcoming governorship election is free, fair, and credible. Now, joining me on the program this evening to discuss this is Honorable Wale Akin Beshote. He is the chairman of the Ondo State People's Democratic Party Diaspora Committee. Uh, of course, uh, is also the vice chairman of the PDP USA. Uh, he join, that's California branch. He joins virtually from Akure. Thank you for your time, sir. You're welcome. All right. Let me, let me start off with... Um, uh, what, of course, uh, we understand, uh, and that is uh, the fact that uh, the PDP uh, will be running its uh, campaign or has announced the commencement of its campaign for the November 16, 2024, on those you know, governorship poll. Uh, the event, of course, they said uh, should start off from tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, October 15th. I would like you, I, I mean, we know the way this campaigns run, but... Um, uh, let's talk about that, and then we, of course, uh, dovetail a bit deeper on how maybe the you know current uh, leadership tussle within the party you know might impact on this. Okay, so what do you want me? To, what's the question again? What do you want me to so tell my you question to you tomorrow? is: uh, uh, I mean, the governorship poll has started. Uh, uh, the race is on. Uh, what's in it for the PDP, yes, given the fact I mean, that uh, currently the party is enmeshed in serious leadership crisis at the national level? Thank you so much uh, for giving me the opportunity to uh, um, represent my party. I really appreciate this opportunity, and I just want to make it very clear. Uh, People Democratic Party is not human being. It is a party that has their own structures. And wherever you can call it, whether in Nigeria or America, there always be internal price, internal crisis in the party. And I'm sure that there's always a mechanism uh, to take care of that. Uh, having said that, tomorrow uh, is being slated for uh, the takeoff of our campaign uh, in Akure. Unfortunately, we were not we're not going to be doing that at the Democracy Park. It's going to be along the Mac Road. And um, we're here for a candidate. A candidate has promised that has promised change. And then uh, it's nobody else than Ajay Alfred Agola, who has always been uh, the forerunner and is our candidate. And we are in. We are in to win. Um, on those state is ready, and I'm very sure that they are ready for the change, uh, because this candidate, Agwala Aja, is ready to present what on those state has been for, what on those state has been expecting uh, for a long time. And uh, as you can see, if you are in Aquila today, uh, we did a rally to let people know that we are here. And we are not just here for a joke. We are here to win. Mm. And the entire Akure State were really engaged with the of PDP today. So oh. mm. tomorrow we're going to have a checkup. Tomorrow we're going to have the Southwest governors in Akure. And tomorrow we're going to hand over the flag to our flag bearer, who is the candidate that we trusted, uh, that has got a lot of experience in this business and is ready to transform Ondo Honorable State. Like, I, I can be sorry. We, we know that recently the Ondo State governorship poll happened, even though we know that your party are lost in the state, talking about a do state. Um, are there takeaways uh, for you, you know, 
from that election we just, you know, held in, in Edo State just uh, recently? Yes, I, I am an information analyst. As a matter of fact, I'm a satisfied information security manager, and I actually witnessed the election online, what happened. Um, I'm sure Edo State will take back uh, what they work for, because if, if we have to go to the judiciary, what, what was voted and planted inside the database of INEC was not what was announced. So I'm sure that PTP, PDP are going to go to court and reclaim you know, their victory. But Undo State is different. Undo State is a different ball game. And unfortunately, people are making a comparison on those states uh, to other states. We are unique. And those states have some few languages, but here we differ. We have different languages. I can tell you for a fact, some people in Ondo South is, are not likely to understand the language of people in the Ondo North. So Ondo State know their onions. And I can tell you for a fact that where there is an overwhelming vote, where people have spoken overwhelmingly, is going to be very difficult for any hand punky or anything. And I can assure you that on those states, they are in for this. They are ready for the change. And what happened in those states is not going to happen here. I, I don't want to say it, but I need to tell you that we are more educated in those states. We are not likely to have all this kind of uh, the, the issue that happened in those states because people are coming out to express themselves. Uh, on those states, electorates are more educated. Mm. On those states, electorates, they know what they want. And when they want to the change, they want to the change. I mean, in your There's analysis, no you, you did, you did say... Uh, sorry to interrupt your line of thought, but you said, uh, I mean, you are a security expert, you're also a communication specialist, and that you actually did uh, follow, you know, through with uh, the happenings there. And you somehow expressed yes. reservations with the outcome. Now, looking at what you saw there, I mean, INEC is coming out to say that, look, uh, about two million plus Registered voters are expected to partake in this uh, election, even though as at uh, now, about uh, 295,603 permanent card, voter cards, you know, have uh, yet to be collected. Uh, would you say, looking at what happened in Ondo State, uh, in Edo State, sorry, uh, your confidence in the umpire, for instance, INEC, would you say solidified? Uh, are you confident that uh, at the end of the day, um, PDP will do well. I'm very confident that PDP will not only do well, we will do better, and we will win. I, I'm in this state, I've been in this politics for a long time, and uh, what I can tell you for a fact is that what happened in Endo State was an eye-opener. And unfortunately, they invited technology. And when you invite technology, you are encouraging transparency. When the voters voted and the votes were counted and the paper was scanned and it was exported to the database, which is worldwide, which everybody has access to it. And when I have a figure of 20 and you are declaring 50 or 40, then you have a fight with technology, which is going to be very interesting for me to know how the numbers that were presented to the public is different from what we have in database. As a matter of fact, I recorded most of the IRF data there. And what I saw was totally different from what I said. I'm not a lawyer. But on the area of technology, like I said, I am an information security manager, certified one, CISM. And our job is to ensure that there's integrity, there's, uh, there's transparency, there's confidentiality. 
And I did not see this in Edo State. So whatever happens in Edo State, I wish them good of luck, uh, good luck. But I want to tell you for a fact that if we have to follow what happened and what the technology presented, PDP will take over their right. Having said that, Ondo State is different. So what in will the what that will the PDP in Ondo State be doing differently? Court. What will the PDP in Ondo State be doing differently? What Ondo State people and uh, what will be done in Ondo State um, um, as a party shifting? I'm not really, I'm not here now to disclose some of our strategies, but what is what I'm what I'm telling you is that in, in Ondo State there were very close um, rivalry uh, between APC, uh, somewhere you have a very close, um, very tight vote, but here it's going to be overwhelming. When you have in a polling booth about 90% of one party against 10%, it's going to be very difficult for rigging or over bloating any figure. So I am assuring you, as a veteran politician in those states, and from what I have seen, on those states will be different. Everybody will come out, you know, you know, lively, and whoever is planning to snatch any vote or um, try to overbloat figure, it's not going to happen because it's going to be overwhelmed. The vote, the people, the, the people will come out emmas to vote for PDP. So in a polling booth where you have, in a ten of a polling booth where you have eight, and you have other side two. This is it's going to be very difficult. So we, uh, we 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 had a lot of study on what happened in those states. We mm -hmm. are using it as a as a benchmark to see what we can do uh, to see what happened and how we can develop on it. Or oh, like I said, so Ondo State is ready and uh, we are ready to win. We All are right. ready to win this election. I can assure you that. All right, um, Honorable Akin Basote. Let's quickly go on a break. When we return, of course, we will pick up. Do stay with us. Many thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Politics HQ on New Central Television. I still have my guest with me, Honorable Wanle Akimba Sote, is the chairman of Ondo State People's Democratic Party Diaspora Committee. He's also the vice chairman of the PDP USA California branch, and he joins virtually from Akure. Once again, thank you for staying with me, sir. The issue we are looking at has to do with, of course, uh, the governorship poll ahead in Ondo State. And uh, let me come back to you, sir. Let's talk about your candidate. Um, you, I mean, he started his, uh, we know he started his political career, you know, uh, uh, on that SDP and, you know, has sort of grew, uh, you know, the ranks. And at some point, he was the deputy governor to the late uh, governor, Rotimi Akiri Dolu, and things fell apart. And he moved from, you know, the APC, I mean, changed parties to the PDP. So my question is, um, there has been a lot of drama, you know, um, particularly around him and around this time as the deputy governor with uh, the former governor of the state. And uh, in terms of all of that, how do you think, how much of that do you think uh, can impact on his chances in this polls? Because we know that at some point uh, it was, the situation became so messy that uh, he was asked to resign, and he refused to. And the people of Ondo State actually saw all of this play out. Well, thank you for thank you for giving me that opportunity to express myself regarding um, our candidate, Honorable Ajay Alfred Agbola. Thank you so much for the opportunity, and I want to assure you that. Um, I just want to take it for uh, a situation where I want to let you know that I reside outside this country, and when you are going for an interview, they don't really know, they don't really care about your qualification. Although your qualification is okay. You may have PhD in America, you may have some, some paperwork, but they want to ask about experience. If you're going for a job, they will ask for your experience. Ajay Alfred Agbola is an experienced politician. 
is a grassroots policy. He did not just have a PhD in politics, but he has went through all the processes. So he knows what it is. When somebody become a councillor, when somebody become a local government chairman and become chairman of so many uh, corporations like Osopadek and other things, and later he become a member of House of Representatives and he went through that stage to become a deputy governor of his state. You will know that he has went to the rank and file of politics. Okay, I, so I mean, talking about not, experience, because you, 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 you are sort of basing yes. his competence around experience. We know that at some point he was, he represented, he was a former member of the Federal House of Representatives and I represented Ilaje Esheodo. SLDO, that's the federal constituency under the PDP, and at some point it was also the deputy governor of the state. So can you just give us about three achievements, you know, political achievements he achieved, you know, while he was holding those positions? Well, as far as I'm concerned from the record that I saw, I learned that there are so many consistent projects that he has done. He has done a lot of consistent projects. Um, he focused on women and children development when he was a member House of Representatives. I know for sure that he focused so much on his rural rural uh, area in Ilaje uh, to ensure that there's transportation for the people. So the rural development was his primary focus. He, he did develop his area, and we know that what he brought to that area, definitely that is what is going to bring to Ondo State as a governor. So like I said, I'm gonna to have to drag you back to a little bit experience. We cannot overemphasize the importance of experience in any field or any endeavor that we are. Ajay Alfred Agbu Ola, the candidate of the People Republic, uh, uh, People's Democratic Party for this November 16 has gotten all requirements, all required experience to be the next governor of Ondo State. I mean, just before we wrap, before we wrap this up, um, everybody, before we wrap this up, I'm sorry I'm interrupting you, but we are pressed for time. There are also controversies around his admission, you know, uh, at the Nigerian Law School. Uh, do you have information on that? Can you clarify that? As far as that is concerned, I have information. I have been told that those are lies just fabrication, like that in Nigeria, every time everybody, uh, President Tinubu went through this process before. So the issue of blackmail and destroying people because people are in a position in Nigeria is common. It's, it's a common phenomenon. So that is not gonna, that does not affect him. And on those state knows, on those state people know him. They know that he's a lawyer. They know that he went to school. They know that he has more education and more experience than the present governor in on those states. So he attended uh, the Nigerian law school. So he attended the Nigerian Law School. He yes. finished. From, he, he went through the process there. Yes, yes. He went through the process and is a lawyer by profession. Okay. So if you want us to know what this man has for on those states, his seven-part agenda, if you know the presentation of the seven-part agenda that is on security, okay, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm made to understand that we really need to go. Uh, we hope to have you again some other time. Okay. Thank you so much for your time on the program, Honorable Wally Akin Bashote. Okay. Thank you once again for being on the well, program. Well, I wish I could other times present my candidate. And please, before you go, let me put his cap on. Ah, so no, you, I'm you, sorry. You that, that would be commercial. But thank you once again for your time. Uh, we thank sincerely you. appreciate thank you. you. Thank you.